What's up everybody? So this is uh, Stan Smith here with the Iron Sharp K9s. I've been following him for, uh, shoot, probably a couple years now. Um, I just love what he does, the way he works with the dogs and kind of how he's built up his own brand. So we finally made a session out to do an evaluation. I'm gonna let him kind of talk about what exactly he felt as a professional, their capabilities. So, yeah. Um, so one of the first things I look for is the, the way the dog interacts with the handler. It's very important that the dog has a relationship with the handler, and like we said, as you got your dogs out, I was watching you work with them, interact with them. Your dogs never tuck their tails, they never were insecure or nervous or anything. They look to you for guidance, and all of those things are very important, especially when it comes to the bite work, because again, they're gonna be listening to you, hey, go into this stressful situation and protect you. Uh, the male, like you said, you were a little, harder on him in the earlier stages and you can see that when he would hit the end of the leash he'd look back to you for guidance like is this right is this okay but after we showed him another dog basically acting out right. <laughs> for lack of better words he was more comfortable with it. the young female you took a step back and you built her confidence up so she's right. chasing the sack and after she played with you for a little bit she played with me and then she played with Jamil as well so both of them have potential to grow in the bite work because again, confidence is the most important thing. You don't want an insecure dog. You don't want a dog that's fearful, afraid, or working out of defense. You want them to be confident. Right. And we could build that up. Cool, cool. So what questions would you have? Um, so my thing would be more so, like I said, I'm new to this. I do a lot of basic training. This is my first time popping into protection work. Um, so if somebody were like me starting out, what would you recommend they start to do to kind of get the dog on the right track? Um, definitely playing with your dog is going to be really important. Making sure they understand that tugging, jumping, <laughs> being obnoxious, going and knocking the camera out of mama's hands, all of those things are okay. There has to be a time where that dog gets to be a dog. Right. And a lot of times we take the dog out of the dog to fit into our lifestyles. And again, that's important, yes. But if we need them to be their natural state, we need to make sure they're working in their natural state. Right. Is there like a particular age you would say to start them at, or is it like determine, you know, say start out at six months, or do you want to start out like two years, or start right out of the bat, or what would you recommend? Um, it, it just depends on what you want to do. So the earlier we start, the easier it is to get them to do things, but we have to take a lot more time to get them to do things because they're still young, they're still developing. Older dogs that have their hand-eye coordination or mouth-eye coordination, all of those things, we can accelerate the process a little faster, but it depends on the confidence of that dog. When they're younger, they don't care about nothing. You know that, they'll go run off a wall the first time, and then the second time they'll think about it. Right. But that first time, if we show them, hey, this is a positive experience when you're going jumping over this, jumping over this, getting used to all of this stuff at a young age, by the time they get older and they're really confident, it's not gonna matter. Just right. like you saw Creed. We've been working Creed since he was eight weeks old. Right. Literally, he'd be out here, he'd be in a crate while we're in here shooting blank guns off, or we're working the older dogs with the bottles. So he gets those experiences but you gotta go slower with it. Can't rush it. No, you can't rush the process, but the earlier you start, the less you have to undo the bad behaviors. It's just like working on obedience stuff. That's what I was about to say. It's like, that's what I have to do is a lot of times people don't understand that aspect of it. So I'm having to go in and spend a few sessions just to correct yep. bad behavior versus starting out. Mm -hmm. Not too soon, but at the right age, not pressure them too much. Yep. So it's kind of the same thing, different worlds, but same basics. Same concept. Uh, old dogs can learn new tricks. You just have to undo the bad habits that they developed with their life. Right. Right. You know, if you've been doing something for two years, like I always ask people, hey, do you speak a foreign language? They're like, no. And I'm like, well, if I ask you to start learning Spanish right now, it's going to be a little difficult. Little difficult yeah. These dogs don't speak English. They don't speak Spanish, Japanese, German, whatever it is. We got to show them exactly what we want them to do. And the same thing in the protection world. And we want a confident dog doing that. We don't exactly. want an insecure dog doing that. Yeah, so like I said, guys, we just started. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot more of Stan here. And his work, let his work speak for itself. <laughs> we'll be here probably every week, you know, getting getting some work in with some Kane. So this is Kane. He's two years old. This is Onyx. She's going on about five months old. Uh, so, yeah, you'll be seeing more of not just obedience training, but creating some protection work. So, yeah, that's where we're at.
brick by brick, and you're going to see these dogs develop right before your eyes, and that's the most important thing. That's what I like the most about this, is seeing dogs like this go from this to being able to have your back in a stressful situation because they're looking to you for guidance and eventually they're going to be the one that you look to for protection. Exactly. So that's what we want. So.